So I got recommended this video a few months ago by this artist, right? Struthless or Campbell Walker. Apparently everyone's kind of heard of him except for me. So I feel kind of embarrassed admitting that I've only just found him. But he made this video that I feel like has actually helped change my life a little bit. So as a thanks to old mate Struthy for making A plus content, I'm completely ripping off one of his video series but giving it my own special touch. Today, I'll be drawing Struthless in nine different styles, but only drawing in the styles of artists from YouTube. Style one, Ergo Josh. Let's kick this off with the man with maybe the smoothest voice I've ever heard in my life, Ergo Josh. There's only a couple of things I actually know about Ergo Josh. He likes to draw girls and he likes to draw in pink. So obviously I had to draw Struthless as an Ergo Josh edition cute Pinterest model. I started out by sketching Struthless in a style that was closer to my own than Ergo Josh's, just to get the pose down. I based my drawing on Ergo Josh's six fan art character piece, which has some of his pink undersketch remaining, along with some finished lines. Something I noticed working on pretty much all of these pieces is how I can't really manage not to have sharp points on parts of the body where others nail a smooth curve. You can really see it in how I draw the ears, jawline, and even the eyebrows in this particular piece. The most challenging part of this was finding the right brushes to create those smooth but textured shadows. I attempted to rough in where I thought the shadows would hit, and then moved on to finding the right brush and method of applying the shadow. Which was really fucking hard. I completed the shadows once and decided it looked like a dog's breakfast, and completely redid it even though I was not enjoying the process. Sorry Ergo Josh. It's me, not you. I started off in Clip Studio, which at this point I was still running the trial version for, so I was still testing out all the brushes. I ended up moving into Photoshop, where I'm more comfortable with the tools and have a larger range of brushes. The first attempt I did, I tried layering the pink and building it up, but I wasn't getting a smooth application. So the second time around, I applied a large area of pink and worked it back instead of working on top of it. And honestly, I'm not sure why that worked out for me. After I was happy with how that was turning out, I cleaned up all the spillover and added in some highlights around the eyes and lips. When the shadows were all done, it was just a matter of touching up the pink sketch lines and making them look a touch neater. I think my lines are still much bolder than how Ergo Josh lines, and like I mentioned, sharper corners on things, but I'm happy overall. What do you think? Did I successfully make an Ergo Josh knockoff? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty happy with this cutie either way. Style 2, Very Little Peach. Thank you to for sp***ing this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with sp Holy shitballs. I love Shan's art, so of course I had to torture myself trying to do this style. Shan is best known for inventing the colour yellow and has just put out her second picture book, Bandits. So this piece is a tribute to that. I actually started off loving drawing this, but in the end it frustrated me to the point of almost derailing this whole video. I doodled the idea in my sketchbook, and as I did that, I thought about how exactly I was going to execute the piece. I tore out an old piece of huge sketchbook paper that I thought would be reasonable to paint. As I started sketching on it, I remembered I had actual watercolour paper stashed away, so I found that and traced the sketch lightly onto that via leaning on a window. Once that was set for paint, I attempted to break down how I thought the process would have gone. Pink wash, paint characters, purple blend on top, some pencil work and add extra brush textures in Clip Studio. Easy. Wrong. Pink wash. Fail to mix a nice purple, use it anyway, attempt a cloud, regret it. Paint some land and trees and rocks to shake off the cloud failure. It's okay, you can paint it out in Photoshop. Attempt another cloud just in case though. Nope, same thing. Pencils on the paper that is still damp, not working. Also, pencils that you received on your 10th birthday, so they're crusty as hell. Decided there was absolutely no saving this and completely deconstructed it and rebuilt in Photoshop and Clip Studio. Should have just started in Clip and left the watercolors for, hmm, never. But hey, we're learning. I completely scrapped the background I had painted and did a much smaller colour wash on the back of the original. I did that off screen. I scanned that and dropped it in as the background as there was no saving those fucking clouds. In fact, they got me so mad I completely left them off the final piece. It took me a really long time to work out this background. And in hindsight, there was probably a quicker and easier way to go about it. But my original plan of just painting and scanning had gone way out the window. I cut Strudless and the Ibis out and kept it as an individual layer. I did the same for the ground trees and that cursed background. I completely recolored Strudless and the Ibis and added some small highlights around them. 
a really nice little detail on the bandit's cover. I touched up and repaired the trees that were broken in the deconstruction. And then I continued on by fixing up rough edges and lines. I added in what I dubbed in my head as Mount Fuji and did some final layer and colour adjustments. In the end, I'm happy with the result. That is one of the cutest damn bin chickens I have ever seen. And again, I'm sorry Sean, it's me, not you. Congratulations on bandits, I'm eagerly awaiting my copy. Style 3, 10 hundred. Style 3 is 10 hundred. An artist from Seattle, sorry, Southwest Michigan. What's up y'all, I'm 10 hundred, I'm an artist from Seattle. Wait. <laughs> What's up y'all, I'm 10 hundred, I'm an artist from Southwest Michigan. Who does crazy murals, t-shirts and custom paintings. He paints crazy vibrant colours from a universe swelling in that noggin so it wouldn't be a drawing in his style if I didn't paint a random item. I had this travel journal my mum bought me a couple of years ago that had a cute design but not really my vibe these days. But I've held on to it just in case. This one took the most time and is probably the one I had the most fun with. First I painted the book with gesso, then took a photo of it to drop into Clip Studio Paint to draft out what I was going to paint while the gesso was drying. Ten Hundred's characters all live in the same universe, so I wanted this Struthless to blend in seamlessly. I tried to give him a classic Ten Hun pose and colour scheme. Once the gesso was dry, I spray painted it with red and this other vintage silver with like a crackle in it. The paint fumes stunk out the house for days. Once the spray paint was dry, it was time to try to get that draft transferred to the book. I grabbed a small brush and some white iron lac paint and off I went. Iron lac sponsor me please? Eyeballing trying to match the draft was probably the hardest part of this painting. Once that was done, it was mostly smooth sailing. I did have some trouble mixing a nice orange as the paints in the warm colours are kind of opaque. I've only used them before to paint my sculptures and they've held up pretty well on those, so maybe it's just the fact that I'm painting on this pop and red spray paint. I actually surprised myself with this. I thought for sure I would have at least 3,000 smudging accidents while being impatient and not waiting for paint to dry. But nope, I only did it maybe once or twice and they were easy fixed. Go me. Painting this smoke was a bit of a pain, but nothing out of control. I mixed a light grey to outline it so I didn't distract from the line work on the magical purple floating struthless. Once the smoke was complete, it was onto the tiny, fine details, my favourite part of any work, and then it was done. I love this thing, and it's not often I say that about my own work. I think the colours came out great, and look, I'm not sure I nailed the knockoff, but I am still stoked with this. Style 4, Drawing with Jazza. If you've ever gone on YouTube and searched a how-to on an art-related topic, Jazza has probably come up in your results. Old May can teach you how to do just about anything on his channel. He dabbles in a few different styles that mix between comic book heroes and anime characters, but today we're going with an attempt on his iconic Jazzatar. Like with Ergo Josh's piece, I began to sketch in a style closer to my own. I started off using tools I'm already comfortable with, as I knew this was going to be a tricky one, line-wise. I tried a couple of different brushes once I moved onto the lines, to get one that would stay a pretty consistent size and without much texture to it. The lines Jazza makes his avatar have completely stray from my own artwork. Everything is stable and connects, and looks neat. As opposed to my own art style, where I'll use a billion different brush sizes, lines don't connect, and everything is varying with each stroke. Once I got some smooth, bold lines going, I was on a roll. I was happy with how this little struthy Jazza was going until I finished my lines and I saw his body proportions didn't match Jazza's style. I reckon I made him too long. I resized his body and shifted things around to try to get him closer to Jazza's. This changed my line size to a different size than the head had, so that's a little upsetting, but I moved on. Couldn't be bothered drawing his tattoos, so I imported his own cursed artwork and laid them over the top. Look at him. Adorable. Style 5. G Soupy. G Soupy. Jisoo is another Aussie artist absolutely nailing it. I only came across her channel recently as well, but I love all the hard work Jisoo puts into literally every aspect of her work. Please girl, take a nap, drink some water, you can write those addresses tomorrow. I've grabbed this great little Struthless quote that my girlfriend loves to fit into the style of Jisoo's already existing two-piece set. 
I sketched out the pose again with a brush that I'm more comfortable with and then moved on to find a brush with a similar texture to the one that Jisoo used for her works. This piece was so much fun to make and really challenged me again on my hard and sharp lines and got me to focus a little harder on rounding out my edges. I really think I nailed my curves much smoother on this one. I have no idea why it was so hard for me to find a placement I actually liked for the quote and I'm still not 100% sold on it, but what are you going to do? Feel free to fix it for me though. Once that was sorted, it was time to figure out the colour palette. Of course I needed to try keep them on brand with the existing art, so I went with brightish pastel colours. This one started in Clip Studio and progressed into Photoshop for extra textured brushes. The tone brush I used is a download from True Grit Texture Supply. So many awesome brush packs. Hopefully this drawing doesn't look like a bucket of burnt toasties. I really like it. Task 6. Fran. Fran, you lovely bastard, your sketchbooks are so beautiful, I could cry. I wanted to copy them, but I could never achieve that level of beauty with a pen, so I've attempted the next best thing, your little comic strips. Why am I talking to you like you're watching this? You're not, but just in case, I love you. This was a lot of fun to do and really helped me relax one afternoon. I had the Digimon movie playing in the background and I just took it easy. I started again by attempting to find the right kinds of brushes and textures. I copied one of Fran's comic strips to sample colours off, and away I went. I'd actually love to see how Fran would draw Struthless. I think he's a character that would fit right into one of her comic strips. I think I managed some pretty soft curves in this one, but I think my lines are a little bold. But still, I'm stoked with how this turned out. I don't know. I feel happy when I look at it. What about you? Style 7. Tricky Wagon. Tricky Wagon. Sush is an angel, and I did not fully commit to ripping off her complete style. I was so close to the end, I needed something a little smaller scale to break it up after these huge painting days. So I bust out the old sketchbook and copics. I traced around my phone case to get that same rough shape she used as the reference images I picked. This pose was really hard to sketch out as I decided to completely pull this one out of my brain and not use any reference. Naughty. I'm still happy with the pose though, and I think this little Campbell would fit right in with Susha's OCs. Style 8. Slew. Slew. Bro. This guy is crazy versatile. He's doing realistic portraits with pencil, he's doing cyclops stencils, he's painting in oils, acrylics, spray painting, he's making movies and merch and god knows what else. I chose to rip off his cyclops stencils because, well, I mean, it's almost already struthless. <laughs> I'm kidding. But seriously. Here we go, same deal. I sketched the face out and then tried to decide on the right brush. I chose the side of the face that I liked the most and copied it and flipped it to keep it neat and symmetrical. When the lines were all done, I attempted doing the funky color layout Slew chose to show his shadows and highlights. This was a real struggle for me and I'm not really sure why. The reference was right there, but it was like my brain kept getting confused what colors were where. I got there in the end. Once I was happy with how the colours turned out, I played with the hues to get the full stencil set. This one really took me on a ride. Slew, you're too clever for me. Style 9. Ethan Becker. Ethan Becker. You think you're so cool? You think you're so tough? You think you're Mr. Big Man? I don't think you've ever seen a knife in your life! Your art is almost as broken as your dog, so let me fix it for you. Just kidding. Ethan Becker, dude, this guy has helped me improve my art so much over the last 12 months, so I'd be trash if I didn't have a crack at his style. This one probably felt the most comfortable for me to work on, as the reference I worked off had some nice, sharp and fast lines. The most challenging part of this drawing was the hat. Hang on, maybe this will help. Damn, nothing. There you go Jazza, an idea for your next video. And I think we're at the point now in my video where you know I sketch this, find a brush that matches, and then try my hardest to make it look like somebody else drew it. Eh, not really nail it, but still be happy with what I made. Ooh, holy shit, that was rough. If you made it this far, thank you. I've worked on this video for all of September and now half of October, all for the relaunch of my Patreon. You can head over there now and download all of September's art for free in its full glory, uh, including all of the pieces that I've done for this video. Every month on Patreon, I will be exploring a different theme. September's theme was copycat. October will be original characters. So for the rest of the month, I will be designing um, 
and creating original characters. So if you want to head over there now, you can follow me or you can become a Patreon, um, whatever you want. Uh, now look, I was going to do Struthless in the style of Struthless as the bonus style, but you know what? Campbell, draw your own self-portraits. Catch ya. I just finished my video and I went to watch it back one last time and now oh my fucking god oh, oh. you guys you guys